I really appreciate everybody coming out. I think we all know this is an exciting time, great anticipation. Uh, when I look at us defensively, just recapping from spring, uh, definitely was pleased with where we were at. Still got a long way to go. But going into the summer, I think the biggest thing I was excited about is that we got all our junior college signees. Uh, we know that a uh, majority of them came in June. They were on campus. They were able to work out. And then we got all of our high school signees. You know, that's always the battle. You want to make sure they finish strong. Uh, they were able to do that. So they were able to get under the wings of Bill Gillespie. And we all know Coach Bill does a great job. Uh, it was exciting to watch and be able to watch them work out the opportunities we were in the office. Um, and I saw young men competing. Uh, that was, was really exciting is that I think a lot of our junior college young men were able to bring in that competition mindset um, that we want to continue to instill. That's been our theme as we went throughout spring ball. So just to watch them work out, watch them compete, uh, that was very exciting. Uh, going into camp, I think the key word you're gonna hear us talk about is competition. Uh, with us having the numbers that we're blessed to have by transitioning to FBS, uh, we, we, we have three deep, four deep, where young men are gonna have to compete to show Coach Gill and his coaching staff um, that they can help us win football games this year. So we're really excited about that. You know, the motto that I've been telling the young men is competition does one of two things. It builds character or it displays a coward. Which one are you? And so that's the, that's the mindset. That's what we're going to talk to them about uh, because it's not about how you start. It's going to be some rough days, uh, but it's about being able to compete and knowing that over time good things are happening for you. And at this time, I'll take any questions. Coach, that said, going into it, uh, where do you anticipate maybe the, uh, the, the fiercest competition battles for, for playing time for starters? Um, Nick, really going to be – really all over the place. When you look at our D-line, we're bringing in so many um, transfers when it comes to our junior college young men, and we got some depth uh, with our high school guys. I mean, we were very depleted last year at that position. So you're talking about just competition. I can see a lot of good competition going on there. Uh, I would say at our corner uh, spot, uh, there's going to definitely be some competition, definitely at safety. Uh, with the uh, junior college young men we brought in, uh, there's definitely going to be some strong competition there. And even at linebacker, just because uh, we moved Brandon Tillman, uh, you got Lucas Irons. I mean, you got competition really at every single position that I, I'm really excited to see. Uh, just based on what I saw this summer, I saw a lot of young men really striving to get better. Speaking of the defensive line, like you mentioned last year, you finished, I believe, five in the rotation, and that really impacted the entire defense. What did you look for in terms of who you wanted to recruit on the defensive line from the JUCOs to the high mm -hmm. school kids, uh, their ability to come in and play right away, make an impact, and also give yourself the ability to have eight, nine, ten guys in that rotation so that way you are fresh and able to make a push up front? You know, last year, as you stated, it was probably for me as a defensive coordinator and talking with Coach Singletary, and Coach Gill was a great uh, encourager to us because we knew going in it was going to be a thin year at the D-line spot. So we really started in August um, with uh, Coach Wilkins, uh, our junior college uh, recruiter, uh, getting on looking at defensive linemen right away. I mean, we did that in August, and I think that allowed us to be successful uh, to be able to sign two in December because in December it's a meat market when it comes to trying to find defensive line. And so for us to be able to accomplish uh, being able to uh, find de defensive linemen, it allowed us to have an opportunity uh, to be successful. And then you look at going into the summer, we signed two more. And so we have four defensive linemen from the junior college uh, market. And then also it, with our high school, we signed four. Uh, high school young men, I think that allows us to be very successful with our competition. The new red shirt rule, how might that impact you on the defensive side? Have you thought about how you want to kind of use that to your advantage? Yes, you know, in talking with Coach Gill, he, he shared with the whole staff, right now we're going to base it on fall camp and, and allow every young man to get an opportunity to showcase to us uh, their ability to help us this year. And I think as we go through fall camp, we'll definitely be having those discussions. David King, I know he plays a lot on special teams, but also in the linebacker room. Uh, he's a guy that started as a walk-on and now is a fifth-year senior. 
um, team captain. What does that just mean and say about his uh, work ethic and then also his uh, the respect he's earned from his teammates? Uh, you, you hit it. Uh, key word is work ethic. You know, he came in as a walk on action on the offensive side of the ball, uh, as, as long with uh, being a long snapper, and then he transitioned to us defensively and just hard work. You know, he he bought in. Um, no matter what the role was, he was dedicated to it. He gave 110 uh, percent. His teammates saw that uh, each year. Uh, he, he, he's a great energizer on the sideline on both offense and defense, and he gained the respect of his teammates. And so I wasn't surprised when he was going to be elected captain just because of the character and the, and the type of young man he's shown to be since he's been here with our program. When you look at the depth chart, uh, post-spring, preseason, you see a guy like Ryan Davis who was a leader in the secondary last year, third string at Spur. Was that it, something, a reflection of what he did in the spring, or is that a motivational thing to get those guys to work hard? No, it just boils down to, um, you know, he wasn't able to finish out spring ball. And so right now I know everybody looks at the depth chart, and most guys hear me say this, um, we don't have a depth chart right now. You know, when you're in there in fall camp, everybody's going to get reps. And it's going to really boil down to that scrimmage. Uh, you know, that's, the, that's what really matters. And after that, that's when we're going to focus on making sure um, the guys that we think can help us win get the reps. Coach staffs around the country have benefited from the 10th assistant. Your side of the ball, Aaron Wilkins, now working full time as an assistant coach on the field. How has he benefited the defensive side of the ball? Oh, he's been a great asset. You know, he came in as a volunteer coach in uh, 2014. Uh, and then he began working with me as a QC in 2015. So he's been with us. You look at going into the fourth season. Uh, and so he, he's been uh, phenomenal. Uh, one, with recruiting, he's from the West Coast. So he was able to, like I said, be the early legwork for us when it came to getting into the junior college market. And so from recruiting, he's been a great asset. Football-wise, he's very knowledgeable. Um, and so I'm excited to have him be a part and be able to give him the opportunity to work in the role that he's going to have with us this year. This your schedule, unlike anything we've seen in years past, when you look at it, kind of what are the thoughts that come to mind when you see the challenge that the schedule poses start to finish? Take it one game at a time. <laughs> yeah, take it one game at a time. I mean, for us, the, the off season has probably been one of the more difficult just because when you're in a conference and you, you're used to seeing some teams, you kind of, over the summer, you kind of know how the season's going to play out as far as uh, rosters and who's coming back, same coaching staff. Uh, this is a very new year for us in regards to every opponent is something or so a staff is new for us. It may be the same staff, but new staff, roster is new. So, you know, that's, that's what I mean by taking it one game at a time. Uh, it's definitely exciting. It's real exciting. Uh, but, you know, we just got to make sure we're focused to take it one game at a time. Coach, you lost some guys that were uh, older guys, either graduation, transfer, or whatever, uh, coming into this year. How do you feel about the, the guys that you have coming in to, to replace them, and wh what has that done for the, the chemistry? Well, based on the offseason and hearing Coach Gillespie uh, communicate with us as a staff, I'm real excited uh, just because, uh, one, the maturity, um, the, the mindset that a lot of these young men that have brought in, not only our junior college transfers, but even our high school young men, they just want to learn. Uh, it, it, it's been very... Uh, humbling uh, to be on vacation. You got young men asking you questions uh, because they're watching YouTube of our opponents uh, just, just because they want to learn. Uh, and so that's what I'm excited about is that I think we got some hungry young men uh, that really just want to do whatever I can do, Coach, to help us win. That's what I want to do. Coach, when you look at your defense from last year, uh, the overall defense, did you see a glaring weakness? And if so, uh, what was that and what have you done to address that? Well, I think the, you know, the biggest glaring weakness that we had was in our D-line. Uh, because we lost so many um, early in the season or prior even to the season beginning, uh, it took a wear on our whole defense because we was, wasn't able to create pressure. We, we knew that going in a little bit. We, we hoped we would we'll be able to disguise it. 
Uh, but then I, I would say Jacksonville State, when we lost Ralph Rusin, uh, that's when it really got a little tight for us. And uh, so we knew we needed to address it. You know, I, I talk about accountability. You know, I'm accountable for the defense. I don't make any uh, qualms about that. We were not good enough. I'm very thankful to still be sitting in this chair. Uh, because across the country, when you don't produce, you know, the head coach and administration, everybody has the right to make a decision. And I'm thankful and honored, you know, that they, you know, gave me this opportunity to uh, be a part of this program this year. And so when, when you look at accountability, like I always say, you know, you're addressing the issues. You're not attacking the person. So addressing the issues, we knew we had to address our D-line. I feel like we, we really did a good job of trying to find some depth uh, when you sign seven to eight young men to uh, co co coexist with what we already have, uh, you know, I, I know for a fact Coach Singletary is going to give us his best in trying to make sure that that room is prepared. Coach Gill said he required every scholarship player to be here over the summer. Not all of them were here, but on the defensive side, those that were here, what did you see in terms of their improvement and what they're going to bring this year in terms of that energy and, I guess, the step up in competition? Well, you know, improvement wise, you know, you, you really rely on Coach uh, Gillespie as far as them being in shape, um, their mindset, being on time, um, willing to do the extra work. Uh, and he's been really pleased with that. Uh, I think, like I said, when you bring in individuals um, that really have a want to, I think certain young men that may have already been here before got to make a decision. Am I going to get in the boat or I'm going to still do it my way? And I think what they've seen is that the competition or the young men that we brought in are really hungry, and that's helped even the current young men on our roster realize, you know, I got to really step it up as far as not just on the field, but off the field in my game day preparation, my game week preparation, how I take care of my body, making sure I get in the training room when I need to. So I, I've seen all the little things increase, and uh, that's very encouraging. Coach, a little bit maybe of a, a pointed question here, but just going back to last year and, and some of the guys that aren't here now, do you feel like that maybe some of those guys weren't in the boat, so to speak? And do you feel like the ones that you have now are? No, I, I, I will say this. Um, to go through a season that we went through last year defensively, um, I never felt like our young men were out of the boat. I never felt that. Um, and for me as a, a coordinator and talking to other coaches I respect, uh, you know, trying to get wisdom, uh, they all told me I had something special. Um, they all told me I had something special. You know, to go through the season, like I said, it wasn't pretty. Uh, but when you have some of those young men come to you that's no longer here and say they love you, they respect you, coach, I, I want to play for you, coach, I'm sorry I let you down, and just trying to let them know you didn't let me down. You know, it's, it's a game. You know, whatever God has for me, he, got, he has for me. He has for this staff. Um, so I think, if anything, it made us closer with the guys that we got returning. Uh, I just think individually, each young man got to make up in their own mind, I need to prepare to be the best. And, you know, it's, I, I hate to say it, it's not just with football. It's sometimes it's with life. Preparing to be on time, not just taking the path of least resistance, being willing to go through the structure that's required to be successful. And so that's what I mean by I see more young men taking it upon themselves to be successful. That's what I'm hearing from Coach Gillespie, and that's really exciting because if a young man can be internally motivated, watch out. He can be very successful in life. With uh, Tillman's move to linebacker, uh, that room seems to be very deep, uh, a lot of competition expected there. Um, you know, is that – what you see as well, and especially when you compare it to the other position groups on defense? Yes, sir. You know, Coach Buck Barner's done a great job of it. You know, in the last three years, we've always made a move from safety to uh, linebacker, you know, and so he's done a great job of being able to prepare those guys. And what I saw this spring, I was really excited. As you say, it's going to be some strong competition, but I look at it as if I can get six linebackers that can play at a high level, I'm going to find a way to play six linebackers in the game. Uh, that's just me. Uh, we got to rotate every two, we'll rotate every two. As long as Coach Gill give us the blessing, that's what we're going to do because we all know it's a 12-game season and you're going to have ups and downs. And I want to have young men get as much game experience as they can get. My goal and our goal is to make sure that they are prepared. So that's the way we explain it to our young men is we're trying to get as many young men game ready. Uh, and then we'll let the cream rise to the top. Uh, when, it's, when, it, when, it's, when they're on the field and they have the opportunity to be successful.